Washington, D.C., a city where great leaders of the past are celebrated. Wars and warriors are remembered, where great leaders are honored, and where battles happen still today. Political battles on the Hill, judicial battles inside the Supreme Court, but Washington has a new Supreme Court this weekend. Down the court, great feed to Swan, slam dunk city. And this court will not be adjourned until a new champion is crowned. Well, the ACC is rich in history and DC is rich in history. It's, it's just a, a great combination. Both see confrontation in the interior. Both have their share of controversy. But there seems to be differences between the political arena and the basketball arena. I think that the battles in Washington tend to be uh, very lopsided. And I think throughout the ACC you find, you find an evenness. The struggle for power on the, on the basketball court is decided by the players themselves. You know, in, a, in the political arena, there are a lot of other things that decide who wins. For this tournament, it's not just who wins, but who watches. The buzz is to uh, not only who's coming, but can I have tickets? Can we get tickets? Can I go to the game? And the fact is, this week we've been tested on constituent service. Everything from uh, helping people with hotels to restaurants to the right color metro that they need to take to get here to MCI Center. Washington, D.C. and the ACC. Both deep in the honor and glory of battles won and lost. Again, they come together to make history. Speaking of coming together, the first teams to tip off at the 05 tourney, the Maryland Terrapins and the Tigers of Clemson. These two had met twice in the regular season. Terp fans liked their team's chances against the Tigers in spite of, or maybe because of, the fact that the Tigers had won both of those regular season games. There's no way, by the way, Clemson's gonna beat us three times in one year. Ain't happening. Of course, not everyone agrees. If everything follows the natural order, Clemson prevails, the cream rises to the top. A lot of hard like last year, but we won again. Opinions aside, the fact remains, Maryland needed to win this game to play in the NCAA tournament. When play began, Chris McCray's hot hand from behind the arc launched Maryland to an early lead. Dribbling on Hammonds into the front court, goes to the basket, puts it off the glass and in. Eight nothing Terps and Oliver Fennell falling for the 32nd timeout. Despite McCray's shooting, the Terps were shaky on the floor and Clemson clawed its way back. Robinson working in the forecourt for Clemson, pulls up free throw line over Cater Medley. No, but there's a loop on Malola with a follow jam. Cater Medley out of the pack of the wall. Takes it straight down, then stolen from behind off the dribble by Perry. Gives it off to Hammonds. Comes left side to Hamilton. Pulls up, takes the three. It's good, and flips it for the lead. The Terps answered the Tiger surge with one of their own. Straight down the middle. Fakes the pass and takes it himself. <laughs> Cater Medley starts in the paint. This is to Bowers and a baseline slam dunk from the right side. With Maryland up by four, John Gilchrist stumbled. Gilchrist stayed on the floor, but he was playing hurt, and it showed. The Tigers, meanwhile, found a hot shooter in Shawan Robinson. Bouncing it out high to Robinson, turns around, loads up the three, and it's oh, good. It's a good sign when Shawan's hitting. That's three threes he's made in a row after missing his first one. 13 to go in the half. Tigers obviously playing for a late shot. Robinson going to load up a three. Got it! Wow, Shawan Robinson, he might have his eyes closed, it's so smooth today. Robinson's rampage sent the Terps to the locker rooms, down by three at the half. During the game's final 20, Clemson, which had hit some deep perimeter shots in the first half, showed it could drive inside, too. Here is Mays down the lane. His underhand scoop shot goes, as down goes Mike Jones and Mays with a bucket. And Robinson's red-hot shooting continued to shell the Turtles. Now Robinson, three on the way, good! Tigers 
Bulls four court. Robinson three. Good. Crossover, loose the handle, stolen by Tiger. Hammond's pushing ahead, ahead of the pack, goes to the basket, lays it up and in. The lead is 12, largest of the game for Clemson. By and large, in the long memories of Terrapin fans and John Gilchrist, this was a day to forget. But for Clemson and its fans, the victory was a reward for a grueling regular season. And just maybe, a sign of an enchanted month. We're playing as well as anybody, and we got a great opportunity to, uh, tomorrow to play the number two team in the country. <laughs> Okay, and advance. Everything's about advancing, just like yesterday. Good job. Let's go, baby. 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 Oh, we man. ended the winning, baby. We ended the winning, man. Right here, man. Come on, everybody go out there and go hard. Go, let's get warmed up, man. One, two, three, six, yeah. four, five, six. Go well, back to the present and to the court where NC State, another team on the bubble, met Florida State. Let's go. One, two, three. Like the Terps, the Wolfpack needed a solid win, maybe two, in this tournament to earn a bid to the NCAAs. And they played to the challenge. Pack working it around the perimeter. Atsor has it. Eftemont fires for three from the top and got it. Bethel driving, goes back to Atsor, contested three on the way and got it. Now to Bennerman, fakes Swan in the air, pull up jumper inside the arc, he hit it. It had been a tough season for Florida State, and at the tourney, their troubles continued. Pims down the court to Rich. Rich will elevate Lazy, missed to layup. When they did score, they had to work hard for it. Galloway to the right side of the circle, gives the ball to Swan. NBA three by the freshman, too hard, no good. Rebound collected by Richard. Richard Ball lays the ball strictly up off the glass and scores. Atsor works it into the front court from right to left. Gives it to Bobby's open, pulls the trigger for three, pulls high again. But the pack, led by veterans Elian Eftemov and Julius Hodge, had an easy time hitting the basket. Hodge in the lane, goes to the basket, left hand layup, good, and a foul. On the backs of its high scoring upperclassmen, the Wolf Pack soared off the court at halftime with a 14 point lead. The second period featured a few Seminole highlights. Right side again for Griffin, mother three on the way, rims out, but jam back in on the putback by Anthony Richardson. Down the court, great feed to Swan, slam dunk city. But although they chipped away at the lead, Florida State could not penetrate the pack D. And they couldn't freeze their hot offense either. The game ticked down, extending the pack season and ending Florida State's. They got the best of us today. They deserve the win. Uh, we got beat by a team that played better than us today. Uh, hopefully we'll learn and grow and come back uh, now next year in a better frame of mind. As anyone venturing outside the MCI Center on day one can attest, the sky eventually darkened and dusk arrived. Inside the arena, there was a change in atmosphere, too. The University of Miami, their first ever ACC tournament, tonight taking on the Cavaliers of Virginia. Yep, you guessed it. Hurricane season was upon us, and not a bad first season it was. They picked us to go 0-16, and, and we won seven games in the ACC, which was really exciting. In their ACC tournament premiere, Miami faced Pete Gillen and his University of Virginia Cavaliers, whose fans had witnessed an uneven year for UVA. But at the start of the game, guard J.R. Reynolds seemed the model of consistency. Got it. Three ball by Reynolds. Reynolds got a man in the air, wants it for 15. JR's jumper good. At the wing, bringing it back to Sean. JR, open three. Reynolds, Lux, book it. This may be his arena, JR. Eight points early on. Miami had its own model. Wondering if the Canes can play ACC basketball? Ask Guillermo Diaz, who belongs on any court he chooses. Diaz lowers the shoulder and lays it up and scores. Diaz getting to the rim. He's got four in the game. Let's go, Diaz! But while UVA played solid basketball early on, the first half was not exactly a thing of beauty for Miami.
then the Canes got it together for a 14-2 run. Underneath the Gary Hamilton, forces one up and gets it to roll through. Raymond Hicks, he fires left open and scores from three-point range. Raymond Hicks with a three ball. Now a timeout on the floor by Pete Gillen. Down by three, the Cavs turn back to J.R. Reynolds who stepped up from the perimeter. Book that one, and JR has got the stroke going. 29-28. The Canes had found their groove, too. Bounce pass, Anthony Harris sets him up for three. In the air, good. Anthony Harris right through. As the first 20 minutes came to a close, Miami held a four-point lead. The second half began, and the Canes continued to build on their lead. Diaz lowers left shoulder, pitches corner, three ball, Rob Height, got it! A big three by Rob Height. His second three ball of the night. Miami stretches with the lead to a 40 to 32. Fortunately for the Cavs, their man Reynolds was still hot. Canister outside, J.R. Reynolds. Reynolds got a look, and that one is good for three. J.R. knocking down another one, 21 points for Reynolds. Reynolds single-handedly keeping Virginia in this game. Miami's Diaz was on fire, too. It's knocked away. Frisbee has it ahead to Diaz. Diaz scoops up the loose ball. Diaz slam dunk. A two-handed slam by Guillermo Diaz. Down by eight. With eight and change to go, the Cavs mounted a comeback. Reynolds with a scoop shot and drives and scores. Momentum jackknifing toward the Cavaliers with Diaz on the bench. The go-to guy all night, J.R. Reynolds, had clutch baskets down the stretch. Reynolds, Reynolds drives, Reynolds inside. The layup gonna get by JR. Holy cow! Unbelievable! But with 22 seconds remaining and the Who's up by one, he made a mistake. Reynolds looking, he lobs it in. King steals it for Miami, feeds it off to Wilkins, call a timeout. And he does. Frank Haith calls a timeout. As so many ACC tournament games do, this one came down to the final shot, which fell or didn't fall in favor of the Cavaliers. No good, it bounces around and it's over. Virginia wins, 66-65. Not the happiest of endings for the first year Canes, but it was a noble effort. We're very proud of the accomplishments we had this year and, and, and have an opportunity to play an ACC tournament. And I think that those are things that we can build on for the future of Miami basketball. With the first day of the tournament behind us, it's as good a time as any to take a look at this year's location. ACC tournament back in D.C. This is what you need right here. I love the fact that Virginia Tech is in the ACC, and I love the fact that uh, the tournament is in Washington. More precisely, the MCI Center is in Washington's unique Chinatown section. Of course, you never forget that you're in America, but there's a definite Asian presence, something new and different for ACC fans. Why do you think that he's pulling the dough out like that? So he can have long boots. Bully oh, in the video of Justin. It's always good. It's always good to go somewhere you've never been before. So it's just an added excitement um, outside of the tournament. Another thing that's different about this tournament, it's very metro. No cars and no parking lots, which makes tailgating a challenge. But ACC fans manage. We, we love it. This is like our 20th year in a row. I mean, so we, we're experienced at this. This is our, our thing. This is, to me, this is the best sporting event in, in the world. I mean, it's better than the Super Bowl, all of it. You know. up a 15 foot no good. Tigers on the glass of the rebound. Acton Bada, rather Babalola for Clemson. Of course, there are things going on in the MCI Center, too. And before Friday's first game, Clemson prepared for a fight. Sure, they had scored a win against the Terps. They were shooting well and psyched to be here. ACC tournament, nothing like it. 
Good morning and welcome to Clemson basketball. They call this frantic Friday at the ACC tournament and the Clemson Tigers are a part of it. It's quarterfinal day as the Tigers take on top seed North Carolina. The catch for the Tigers, they were going up against a very confident Carolina team. The top ranked Tar Heels had buried Clemson twice on their way to the regular season ACC crown. But hey, the ACC tournament is a brand new season. Kind of. Carolina rattled their way to an early lead, surprising no one. Here's Scott, out front, good. Boy, that ball went in, rattled around like it might come out, but then it fell through the nylon. Gets it to May, May turns around, now into the lane, and the defender falling off of him, and he manages to score. And yet, something was different on the court. Carolina was leading, but it was missing lots of shots. And on the other end, the Tigers were hitting in the paint. Hamilton burning to the center court circle, drives the lane, gives inside to Mees, who jams it from the left side. Carolina continued to score when it counted, for a while anyway. Felton the other way. Felton on the drive. Fingertip roll is good. And Oliver Purnell wants a timeout. But here were the Tigers coming inside again. And again. And again. Moore driving. Hits the cutter. Ford who jams it for the right side on the bounce pass from the assist man, Cheyenne Moore. And when they weren't in the paint, Shawan Robinson was launching threes and hitting. Robinson found the hoop inside this time, and suddenly the Tigers were on top. Clemson leads 40 to 38. 12 points for Shawan Robinson. Seconds later, yet another Robinson tray sent the Tigers romping into the locker room up by three. The second half started, and Clemson's orange hot hand continued. Now James Mays inside, goes to the basket, strong off the glass, rolls it up and in. Six in the shot clock, Robinson around the screen, penetrates, pull up jumper, free throw line, good. 17 for Robinson. While Carolina struggle. Now Sean May, baseline, powers it up off the glass, too strong. May with the rebound, trying to stick it back, stripped to the ball. Midway through the half, the Tigers had cruised to a 12-point lead. And drives toward the lane, pulls up, free throw line extended, and he knocks down the jumper. For a team like Carolina, there are games that showcase court talent, and then there are games where leadership steps up. This was one of those games. Tar Heel shooters started hitting from downtown. Jawad moves on Babalola, got it to McCants, his three, good! Here's McCants, top of the key, takes the shot, got it! Into the left corner, jumper, good for three. Clemson wasn't going away. But the heels were fighting through the lanes. Marvin on the drive, all the way for the layup at 77-73. Down by two with less than two to go, Carolina leader Raymond Felton had the ball. Here's Felton, way out, got it! Launched from somewhere south of the White House, Felton's deep three-pointer gave the Heels the lead. And it was a lead Carolina clung dearly to. But Clemson had left an impression. They could, without a doubt, play with the big boys. Speaking of playing with the big boys, this was Virginia Tech's first season in the ACC. Like Miami, the Hokies surprised a lot of people. They finished a strong fourth in the finest of all conferences. We said that first day, accept the opportunity, accept challenge. We none of us knew what was going to happen. Let's be honest. No one really knew what was going to happen. All right? Four months later, the one thing we do know is that we belong in this league. And speaking once again of big guys, yeah, big senior from Hope Forest, South Australia, number 12, Luke Sencher. The Hokies were facing Luke Sencher and his Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. We the best team out here, then let's go to a family on three. One, two, three, family. The early moments of the game featured some sloppy offense, 
So both teams have had a six-day layoff. Both look a bit rusty early. And also some fine hokey defense. Find them in transition. Good crossover. Lost the handle of the ball. Rolls out of bounds. Hokies possession. Then the Jackets found some seams and hit some shots. McHenry penetrates. Morrow, three right corner. Good. Amo warming up here in our nation's capital. Georgia Tech leading 12 8. Elder at the right. Thought about the three. Steps in. Now Schentzer. He'll turn right. Jump hook. Rattles in over the top of Cole McCollum. Virginia Tech's guns began shooting two. Hokies can tie with a three. Dixon does. Three at the top for Carlos Dixon. A steal and stuff gave the Hokies their first lead of the game. Stripped into the ball. It rolls free on the right side to Dixon. Over to Collins. Down the lane. He goes and he rams it. And the Hokies lead it 17-15. The steal by Dixon and the dunk by the Hokies. Coleman Collins. Nice bounce pass to Washington. And he rams it. Goes up and under and slams it on Rashawn Dickey. And another Hokie jam put them up by four. But the Jackets battled back from behind the arc. Elder a three. Got it. B.J. Elder. Nine in the first half. That was a deep one. And left the floor at the half with a five-point lead. Georgia Tech returned to the court on the attack. Charged to an 11-point lead. Bynum penetrating from the right. Gets to the goal. Pushed it up and in. Popped into the air to McHenry. Yellow Jackets reset. Here's Jared Jack going into the lane. Fires and scores. Georgia Tech by nine. Front court elder. Fakes the three. Baseline around Washington. Off the window and in. Washington did the flop. Didn't get the call. I think Virginia Tech wants a timeout. Yep. The Hokies had their moments in the second half. Zane brings the ball to the near wing, crosses over, goes down the lane. The floater with the left hand is good. Now they got the lid off for Sabian Dowdell. But the day belonged to the Jackets. Luke, look back door. Here's Elder faking the three. Step in two. Good, B.J. Elder. Who simply outplayed the Hokies on both ends and cruised to a 19-point triumph. Like the Canes, the Hokies left the ACC tournament wiser and eager for next year. Yeah, we're proud of it. I mean... Everybody had us pick no higher than seven. A lot of eight, nines, and ten. So, I mean, the four seed get a home game. I mean, we pulled a lot of doubters around. I think we earned a little respect here. So, yeah, we're proud of that. I mean, we wanted to prove more today, but, I mean, we can't, that can't take away from what we did this whole season. So, I mean, yeah, we have a heads down now, but, I mean, we got to always have our heads up in the end because we did more than anybody expected us to do. We're halfway through quarterfinal Friday at the ACC tournament. Two teams have reached tomorrow's semifinals, and two games remain to determine the other two semifinalists. Two classic ACC teams enter the court to continue one of the many great conference rivalries. North Carolina State and Wake Forest had clashed in the final game of the regular season, and the Deacons had triumphed on a shot at the buzzer by their all-ACC guard, Chris Paul. But Paul would not be in the lineup for this matchup, and the pack gearing for revenge. Of course, Wake was not about to roll over. Here's uh, Gray going to feed the low post. Williams gets inside the pack and dunks her home. Great start for the Deeks. But the pack were on the mark with their passing. Backdoor pass to Watkins. Left hand layup. Got it. Two great assists already for Ilian Eftimov. And on fire with their shots. Inbounding for the baseline. They get it to Hodge, top of the key. He'll fire up a jumper, swish. The pack is eight of nine from the field to start this game. The pack jammed their way to a nine-point lead. Here's a give in to Simmons, and he dunks it. Timeout Deeks. 27-18, NC State. Oh, but this is the ACC tournament, where momentum can shift in seconds. And in no time at all, a nine-point lead can disappear. 
shot. No, he's going to give to Williams for the layup. Mark, that was a half shot, half pass. The Demon Deeks have come from behind and lead it 32 to 30. Down by three, and with time in the half waiting, the pack looked for a shot. And with five seconds to go, Julius Hodge found it. Jill fire for three. Got it with three seconds left to go in the half. After playing to a dead heat in the first 20 minutes, the Pack and Deeks returned for the second act. Wake grabbed the early edge. And the rebound to Downey. To Gray, fires for three in transition swish. But the Pack slammed back. Left him off top of the key against Danilus. Right side for Hodge, three on the way. It's off the rim. No good jam back in by Betterman. Down to Hodge, long pass up the floor to Betterman. Lost for Brackman. It wasn't that the Deeks were not connected. But the Wolfpack played like a team possessed. It was a scrum for it. Eftemop uh, laying on the floor. I thought he had it. Now it pops loose again. They're still fighting for the ball, and Brackman picks it up. Call it passion from senior standout Julius Hodge. He whips a backdoor pass to Hodge for the jam. 20 for Julius Hodge, and it's 67-57, pack by 10. Or electricity from pack freshman Andrew Brackman. Or maybe the coach just shed his sport coat at the right time. But I said to take his jacket off because we all know that that's good luck. We have good luck when he, take, he, when he takes his jacket off, they win. That's what my daughters say. <laughs> Whatever was in the air, the pack rode it to a spectacular victory over Wake Forest and into the tourney semifinals. But I have to admit, this game felt especially good. It was um, real sweet because everybody stepped up as a team. It wasn't one guy going out and scored 30 points. It was everybody did their part. It, it feels good right now. The final contest on Friday featured the University of Virginia fresh off their tough win over Miami against a Duke team that had done better than many had predicted. Duke had finished the regular season ranked fifth in the nation, thanks in large part to three players. J.J. Redick, Daniel Ewing, and Sheldon Williams. Cavaliers knew they would have their hands full, but make no mistake, Virginia came to play. Shot will go. Devin got the layup. Working on Demarcus Nelson. Singletary starts to go right. Makes the pivot free throw line. Bannister. Bannister with a fake. Bannister pulls up 15 feet. Jumper good. Duke kept pace with solid play from Ewing and Williams. Off quickly to the speeding Singletary. On the right side of Smith. Blocked from the side by Sheldon Williams. Ewing coming out for the three. Good. Ewing left side. And Duke has got the lead back at 24-23. This is an 8-0 run by the Devils. But J.J. Redick, the league's leading scorer, was not hitting. Ewing in the paint. Ewing looking for Redick right. They rotate him over for the three. Off the rim, it's short. Fortunately for the Devils, Lee Melchioni won. Lee Melchioni back to the rack for the stick back. Work against Bannister down the left side. Gets it off to McClure. Day dives to the paint. Kicks it out to Melchioni for three. Got it. With the score knotted at 24, the Duke offense began to click. Melchioni gives it up to McClure, wide open, takes and makes a three. Dave McClure, his first three-pointer of his career. While the defense put the clamps on the Cavaliers, riding the waves of junior Melchioni and freshman David McClure, the Devils capped the half with a 16-4 run. That put them up by 12 at the break. Early in the second half, the Cavs began to chip away. Kicks it back outside. He's got J.R. Winners for the three. Count it. Nice start by Virginia. They take the 12-point lead to seven. A Devin Smith three. Cut the lead to three. That's good, good by Devin Smith. And the three makes it 42-38. And moments later, J.R. Reynolds drive and foul sliced it to one. He goes right into the TV camera guy sitting under the support. The Who's run ignited Reddick who sank several crucial shots. Out of J.J., gets a screen, fires a three, makes a three. 
Virginia was not about to give up. They couldn't connect when it counted. As the clock ticked toward the end of their season, the Cavs could only watch as the Devils sewed up a spot in the semis on seamless D. And true team spirit. I, I, I really thought we played well defensively, but offensively, you know, we feel so much better if J.J. shots going in. And it just, that's just the way it is, you know. And uh, so you have to rely on something else. And our rebounding was, was great. I mean, we out-rebounded them by 24, and that shows heart or character, and I think that's what today's game was about. You've been killing us, Rip! Come on, Rip! It's a horrible call! As Frantic Friday becomes a fond memory, it might be time to think about the guys with the hardest jobs on the court. There's the horn, and the pack may have punched a ticket into the NCAA tournament. State 81, Wake Forest 65. Well, baby, we got a job to do. Big upset here at the MCI Center in Washington, D.C. in game three of the ACC quarterfinals. Let's go, baby. I really don't have a game. My game face is smiling. I love to smile at kids, smile at coaches. You don't want a kid to see a stone face out there all the time. He doesn't know what he's doing. This guy mad about. Best conference in the country. Understand that? We're going to act like it. We're going to play like it, right? Showtime. Here we go. Showtime. Have a good one, guys. All right. I'm not out there to call a million fouls. I want to try to prevent this stuff from it before it happens. But if I had to call them, then I'd call them. Don't do it. I'm watching. I'm watching. I am watching. Uh, JR, stop holding them shirts. I see it. I just tell him to stop holding the shirts. Malchione's fourth three right before the buzzer to end the first half sends Duke running to the locker room with a 12-point lead. I've been hard on those kids, 15 from Virginia and two, because they were grabbing. It's quite obvious. The man got cut all across. You see him all across his arm. Um, we got to make sure that those guys, and you got to look off the ball Absolutely. to catch them. That's where it is, OK? Off the ball, off the ball. Uh, so we, we got the adjustments, guys. We know what we got to do, OK? It's going to be a tough 20. It's going to be a tough 20. Good job. Good, good, good. I communicate a lot with them. You know, I tell a kid, get your hands off. If I tell you, get your hands off, and the next thing coming is going to be a whistle. <laughs> we try to keep kids feeling like they can communicate with us and feel good about themselves when they're actually playing the game. At least be reasonable. That won't, that won't, I, I, I don't mind watching it. You won't, if I'm going to look out for you, but you got to be reasonable. Yep, little extracurricular activity. Pete Dillon quick to get out on the floor, too. Come on, 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 come on. Come back. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. No, you ain't good. You ain't good till I tell you good. All right? Oh, no, you're not good till I tell you. You need to let me talk to you first, okay? I'm sorry. Let me tell you guys something. You and Senior enjoying a good ball game. Don't let me toss you. I will, I will do it. You know, early in my career, I was loud. Uh, when it comes experience, comes confidence. Hey! You two guys gonna get in trouble. Y'all playing so well. Hey, Chaplin, you two guys be careful. Don't get no crazy fouls. We don't need them. Duke is gonna win this one, 76-64. Oh, Duke, that's a tough one. Yeah, that was hard work. The score does not, in, is not indicative, not indicative of, the of what we had to do. Wow. Guys, that's a little post, a little post game. Good job, Stevie. Good job. Good job. Good job. Saturday, sunny blue skies, glorious weather. In short, perfect conditions to go inside and watch two great basketball games. Me too. The day's first semifinal featured the year's second meeting between two teams that were ranked in the preseason top 10. North Carolina had won the regular season conference championship. While the Jackets had struggled with injuries and finished fifth, but Georgia Tech was healthy again. And well, there are those intangibles. I think Georgia Tech's going to win, and my favorite player is Luke Shencher and um, B.J. Elder and Jared Jack. Why do you like Luke? Tell us why you like Luke so much. Because my name is Luke. One, two, three, Carolina came out of the locker room smoothly 
with some early scores in the paint. Sean May banks it off the glass over the top of center and beyond the arc. Takes it into the corner to Melvin Scott. Jumper good for three. But as the half wore on, there were some subtle and not so subtle signs of trouble. He'll look, now crossing for Manuel, who had it blocked by McHenry from behind. Carolina shots just weren't falling. And Tech was going down low to score. Here's Jack picking Schenzer for the dunk. Here's Jared front court at the right side. Between the legs against McCants, he'll drive all the way in, reverse it up, and on the board is Jared Jack. Car heel troubles aside, Tech was quite simply playing great ball. Stop, stump, Schenzer layup, good, and a foul. What great playmaking by Jared Jack. When Carolina did connect, the Jackets would respond. Now to Jarrett with four, three, gets it to Bynum. He'll cut loose a triple. That's good, Will Bynum. Shits are out to defend. McCants gets it back, steps up, another three. Good, boy, that's a great tough shot. Yeah, what are you going to do? Morrow to match it. Got it, Amo. Uh-oh. Carolina left the court at halftime on the heels of the Jackets, down by six. UNC's fans were revved up for a strong second half. And the heels, Sean May, fought for some tough baskets. May found the hoop for three straight scores that put the heels up by one. Chance to open and can't hit it, but May taps it home. May caught up with the double team, backing in on Dickey, turn, jump hook. And Carolina leads 51 to 50 on Sean May's jump hook right baseline. But another smooth shooter. Tex will Bynum pull the Jackets back in front. With Georgia Tech up by three, Luke Schencher cashed in a rare Bynum miss. And the lead grew to five. Consecutive scores by Rashad McCants and Raymond Felton brought UNC within one. Back door layup, good. 67 to 66. As time was winding down, Schencher's layup gave the Jackets a little breathing room. Tap follow, Schencher on the follow for the third time. While the heels shooting was still missing its mark. Here's Jawad Williams looking at a three. No good, May kept it alive, but held to the rebound. But the Jackets hit every hoop in sight, for so it seemed, led by Will Bynum's 35 points. The Jackets sent Carolina back to Chapel Hill and advanced to the tourney final. Eight seconds, seven, Felton front court. McCann sets for three, off the mark. Jack the rebound, and Georgia Tech has won the game! An impressive victory, but an upset? Maybe not. I said, don't let everybody tell you that's an upset. We're a great team, we've done a lot of things. When we're all together and whole, we feel we're one of the better teams in the country, along with them. For the afternoon's second semifinal, third seeded Duke prepared to meet number seven NC State. On paper, it might have seemed a mismatch, but experts knew better. I, I said before the tournament started, I thought North Carolina State and us were the two teams that had the most adversity. And I thought they were getting healthy. And, you know, not that I made a prediction, but I thought they were going to make a deep run in the tournament because they're healthy now. And the pack sure looked healthy shortly after tip-off. Hands to Benjamin, he'll fire a long three from there, swish! The throw down pass goes to Eptomov. Leads it back in the middle for the backdoor cut for Julius Hobbs. But Duke wasn't exactly ailing either. Randolph with it on top, getting the pass from Ewing, throws back to Ewing, now down low to Williams. To Randolph who drives the lane, it's jammed. And when J.J. Redick sank his first shot, the Devils seem downright hardy. It's good to see J.J. hit his first shot out of the blocks. Wolfpack guard Ingen Atzor found the hoop twice to tie the score at 14. Atzor will drive him to the basket, scoop to the hoop, got it. And he is two for two shooting in the game. Devil big men Sheldon Williams and Chaplick Randolph scored from the paint. 
Cameron Bitterman and Levi Watkins hit from the outside. Hodge giving it up to Watkins, down a low post right for Eftemont. They double him, throws back to Watkins, three on the way. Good from the time of the game. How about Levi Watkins, six points in this ball game. Duke's king of shooting lived up to his buzz. There's not a lot of human beings, maybe other than Reggie Miller, who can make shots like that. J.J. turns off the uh, screen and fires a three and makes a three. J.J. Redick heating up here in Washington. And State Frosh, Andrew Brackman, launched the buzz of his own. Grant drives to Marcus Nelson down the lane, gets to Brackman, reverse layup, got it. Hodges got it underneath the Brackman, lays Ooh. it up and in. Over Sheldon Williams, what a move by Brackman. Time running down on a wild first half that saw the lead change hands eight times. Cameron Bitterman jumper with the pack up four at the break. You don't have to be a college basketball expert to know that it's one thing to build a lead against Duke, quite another to hold it. Down inside it goes to Sheldon. They double down on him, muscles it up and in. Back outside Ewing for three bottoms. The pack knew they had to keep scoring. And as important, they had to figure out a way to stop J.J. Redick. But here's the problem. How do you stop the unstoppable? J.J. with a shot fake, fires a three. How sweet it is! J.J. from the corner, bottoms! J.J. comes out firing and hitting again. Redick's in his own. And if it's not one hot shooting devil, it's another. Outside to Reddick. Right wing to Ewing. Fires. Hits a three for the right side. In the end, the pack simply could not keep pace. But they did not leave empty handed. Because of their success at DC, the pack were headed to the NCAAs. And Duke. They had a date at the MCI Center playing the Jackets for all the marbles. You know, the top five or six teams in the conference, you can pretty much flip a coin and anybody can beat anybody. And uh, and Georgia Tech hadn't been healthy, you know, fully since January, and now they are, and they're playing a lot better. And we expect a, a really tough challenge for us. Championship! One of the great things about the Sunday final is that tip-off begins in the afternoon which provides some time to reflect on some of the ACC tournament's most crucial players. Football games we play against the other bands, and pretty much we look at this kind of like the same kind of effect. We want to be better than them because we want to win in the basketball game and we want to win as a band. You want your team to be the best, your fans be the best, your team, I mean, you want to play the best, make your band sound the best. There's a little rivalry going on too. You can hear it back and forth between the bands, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of rivalries going on at the same time. There's one on the court and off the court too. Coming behind the scenes and seeing how all this works at such a huge event, it's pretty amazing how all these people can get in and out in such a short period of time. Home games, we have all the time in the world and we take it for granted, but here, you just, you learn time management pretty much. Go back! Yeah! Woo! <laughs> With the sporadicness of, like, having to play not normal, usually we'll play whenever we want in the game, whenever we have the timeouts. Now we have to bounce back and forth between bands and we're assigned, like, different timeouts. I mean, I can get into the game, but not as much because I got to be, as soon as the timeout's called and something happens, I got to be ready. It's tough because we don't have any other kids here, so you kind of got to get the crowd energized. Got to get that sixth man. Even if it's people that don't even go for our school, if it's Duke, we got Duke in there. That's our goal here is to get everybody else involved in the game and, and you know, 
don't feel like they're a, just a spectator, feel like they're part of the atmosphere too. So it's a tough job. cheerleading section here on our side. Probably the loudest band in all of college basketball. I mean, we're never give up. Doesn't matter how much we're losing by, we don't shut up. So it's awesome. Before the tournament final, the Devils and Jackets warmed up on the floor. And in the stands, the sister of a certain seven foot one inch tech center got familiar. Um, he's always wanted to play basketball. He's tried football and cricket, but he always had a passion for basketball and he loved it. And he's gone such a long way, so it's been great. As did the matriarch of Duke basketball. As the daughters are getting older and I'm getting too old, they're uh, taking my place as the team mothers. Used to be team little sis, then team big sis. And now they're kind of going on into the mother role. Yeah, I, I hope I'm not that old. I, I, I'm not old enough to be their mother yet. Backstage, some final preparations. Five minutes here, so we're gonna go out in the um, warm-up area and go over the um, timeouts. Any other questions you guys have? Any logistical issues we need to go over today? Same order. Same order as yesterday. Um, same intros. Same intros, I think yeah. great. And it's showtime. The game started with some slick shooting on both sides. Shavnik Randolph gets the Blue Devils on the board first. Blue Devils see Bynum take it in the lane. He'll fall away. High arcing shot off the glass and in for Will Bynum. Sunday banking hours. Then Georgia Tech hit some hard times. And some tough Duke defense. Chechers there, blocked by Shavnik Randolph, tipped by McHenry, no good. If you're the jacket coach, you hate to see J.J. Reddick hit his first jumper, especially when your own team isn't scoring. The drop down pass goes inside, turning off the baseline, shot won't go, tap no good by West, and Randolph holds it down for the Blue Devils. Duke wasn't having an easy time of it either. Here's Nelson for three, it's off the mark. West crashes the glass, had it knocked away by Williams, but into the hands of Dickey. Then Daniel Ewing got hot. Saw a little opening, darts down inside, slices underneath the defense. Now he take the bigger guy down inside, laying him off the glass. And B.J. Elder answered. Find him on the drive, into the lane, skips for Elder's three, and it's good. B.J. Elder out of the deep right corner. Looking for some help, bounce pass to Elder with Nelson on his hip. Williams coming on the double team. Elder turns and buries a two. Way to go, B.J. But when J.J. struck from beyond the arc, B.J. didn't have an answer this time. Down low is Elder. He'll work on Melchioni to the goal. Got taken out on the shot, out of bounds. BJ can't believe it. And quite frankly, neither can I. Fortunately for Tech, their own JJ, Jared Jack, was there to pick up the pieces. Here's Tech on the run. Three on two. Jack Morrow layup. Good. Anthony Morrow was six. Up by four. Reddick struck again. to send Duke to the locker room on the good side of a 34-28 halftime score. Okay, we couldn't resist. What cards does Georgia Tech have to draw here to, to win this game? I, I, all they really need to do is uh, get that Joker Reddick out of the game. Tech came back on the court, hoping for a better performance from two of their aces. Will Bynum held to four points in the first half, and from Luke Schencher, who had scored only two. Schencher, Got to the hoop early. Luke turning on Randolph. Right hand rattles in. But Bynum continued to struggle. In the meantime, Duke's big three were paying big dividends big time. He'll come all the way down, feed it over to Sheldon. Slam dunk and a foul on the play. Crossover goes right all the way to the rack. Loops it off the glass. It rolls and goes for Daniel Ewing. That is his 12th point of the ball game. Out front it goes to JJ. Fakes a deep three. Goes by Smith in the paint. Hanging right-handed right to the key gun. J.J. Reddick, 16 points of the ballgame. 
Daniel Ewing's three stretched the Duke lead to 13. Ewing a three, got it. Daniel Ewing with 15, that's his first three of the day. Things weren't looking up for Tech with Jared Jack hurt his ankle. Jared Jack on the floor writhing in pain. The trainer already out there along with Paul Hewitt. With Jared sideline, Tech sputtered. Then he returned, and suddenly the Yellow Jackets were golden. Now Jarrett on the drive, pushed it up, got it, wow. Here's Will racing at front court, approaching six minutes. Bynum's runner up off the glass and in. And the Devils started to cool off. Reddick on the drive, head fake, pushes up the shot, won't go. Shenzel the rebound. Out of Jack, here comes Tech. Wolfel all day on offense, Jarrett will stop, gun for three and hit. Jack's three sliced the Duke lead to five. And when Ewing fouled out, Tech fans came alive. And they're gonna call a charge on Ewing, and that's five. Jarrett Jack takes the charge, and Ewing is out of the ball game. The game had true electricity as the clock wound down. And with 25 seconds left, Anthony Morrow scored from the paint. Put it up strong, got the roll, won't go, Schentzer follow no good. Morrow keeps it alive, put it back up, it's good with 24 seconds left. Tech was down by one. Could they do it? Of course, putting Mr. Automatic on the line doesn't help. Eyes the basket, puts the shot up. Perfect. With the Jackets down by three and 17 seconds to go, Bynum miss twice. Jarrett works out to the lane. Back for Bynum's three, right corner to tie. Off the mark, no good. Rebounding McClure. On the rebound, David McClure was fouled, and the freshman went to the strike with the championship on the line. McClure shot, will I go tap in? Sheldon Williams taps in. Taps it in with two seconds left. This one is over. And the Blue Devils have won their sixth ACC tournament championship in the last seven years. As the smoke cleared, Duke and its fans began to celebrate. For the sixth time in seven years, the Blue Devils had brought home the ACC tournament trophy. And this year's team had special meaning for Coach K. This is an, an unusual team, uh, but it's a team that has uh, has had great heart and no excuse making. And uh, where different people have stepped up with the three kids, with Daniel, JJ, and Sheldon being our foundation. And we've, we've really come ready to play every game. And uh, that shows the character of our, of our kids. Coach K calls this team unusual. As for the players, tough, man. Tough. We're a tough team. Uh, that's about tough team to really describe the team. In one or two words, describe your team this year. Uh, tough and uh, together. Those are two words. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Here are three more words for the 2005 Duke Blue Devils, ACC Tournament Champions.